I sense the there's more of the politician in Shanti ji, <laughs> and there's the more of the activist in you somewhere, uh, 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 Prashant. But I just wanted to yes. qualify his statement. You see, though it is true that we uh, raise our voice against whoever we feel is doing something wrong. Yes. But there is a difference between a party in power and a party in opposition. A party in power which is doing something wrong can do a lot of damage, a lot more damage mm -hmm. than a party which is in opposition. So sometimes when people say, hey, look, you are attacking the BJP right now, why are you not attacking the Congress? They also did this, that or the other. I point out that, look, they are not in power right now. The BJP is in power and therefore doing this damage. And therefore, I am uh, uh, pointing that out. So you won't call yourself, do you call yourself, and he was seen as anti-Congress for a long time. You are today seen as anti-BJP. Uh, is that a fair way to describe your politics? No, I don't think so. It's anti-power. No, it's not even... Anti-establishment. Well, I mean, if the establishment is doing something wrong, if the establishment, whenever the Supreme Court does something good, I always applaud it. Yesterday they passed a very good order on this Chardham Highway. I applauded that. So if, if, if the establishment is doing something good, I applaud it. But when I find, as is the case today, that the establishment is doing things which are essentially destroying not just our democracy but our civilization itself, then certainly I have to uh, attack the establishment. I think what I'm getting at, who was it more difficult to take on, Indira Gandhi or a Narendra Modi? Narendra Modi is more difficult to take on, you see, because this is an almost fascist government. The uh, Indira Gandhi was not, not fascist in that sense. She did impose the emergency. He can uh, say uh, more. Was it difficult to take on Indira Gandhi? Not at all. In fact, when I cross-examined her for two days, on the evening of the first day, 12 MPs, opposition MPs, including Pilu Modi, had come to Allahabad. I invited them for dinner at my house. And Pilu Modi said, Shanti Bhushan, you've been very soft on her. Can't you be aggressive and provoke her, etc.? I said, that could be very easily done. But it would be the surest way to lose the case. He said, why? I said, look here. She is a sitting Prime Minister. Here is a puny High Court judge, very ordinary. Mm -hmm. And if she is insulted in his court, he will feel responsible for it. And the only way he can recompense her is by deciding the case in his favor. Pilu Modi was not convinced. But after the case judgment came, and I came from Bombay to Delhi, Murarji's a meeting was going on of the opposition parties at Murarji's house. So as I entered the room from the airport, Pilu Modi called me, Shanti Bhushanji, come here. I went to him. He said, I remember today what I told you and what you told me. And now I feel how right you were and how wrong I was. Yes. But the two of you came together most famously during the Amadmi Party movement. You all were both co you know, founders of India against corruption. On hindsight, any regrets? I mean, many believe it is that movement which in a way led to the fall of the Manmohan Singh government and brought in the Modi government, which today you are uh, sort of so critical of. So do you have any regrets of India against corruption? You left Arvind Kejriwal. He formed his own political party. Not as such the regret of running that India against corruption campaign. But in hindsight, there are two things which I do regret. One is not having seen that the movement was to a very large extent supported and propped up by the BJP RSS for their own political purposes to bring down the Congress government and get themselves in power. You're saying that today on record. You didn't. You believe that the movement was propped up by the BJP RSS? Yes, yes. I have no doubt about it today. Including Anna Hazari himself or he was not he aware was of it? He was also not, probably not aware of it. And you were not aware Arvind, either? Arvind was aware of it. I have uh, very little doubt of that. The second regret that I have is not having understood Arvind's character early enough. Uh, I understood it too late, by which time we had actually created another Frankenstein monster, so to say.
interesting the way you're putting it because people would say that, you know, how could Prashant Bhushan not have known what was going on around him? Why are you only singling out Arvind Kejriwal? Is there, there seems to be a sort of, has it because of the nature of the fallout? No, it's not that. You see, I was very, very exceedingly fond of Arvind. But I was never very critically looking uh, at him in order to see ki whether he is uh, uh, unscrupulous in his means or not and so on. But it became clear immediately after the Lok Sabha elections, one after another things unfolded before my eyes. And it became clear that he was not only unscrupulous and dictatorial, but he had total contempt for uh, the policies of the party because we had formed 34 expert committees to form the policies of the party after they had given their reports and we had to adopt them, etc. He said, throw them in the waste paper basket. We will take a stand when it suits us, according to how it suits us.